What's up, guys? Praise the Lord. Saw a man a minute. And uh, I'm going to do a teaching I've been sitting on for a year. It's probably one of the hardest videos. And I really don't feel like doing it right now, but the Lord's really put on my heart to do this right now. So, <clears throat> I just want to share this beautiful Southern Colorado desert sunset with y'all. Cause it has been like a hundred degrees out here today and the sun is setting in the west amen praise the lord praise god what's up guys all right let me turn off the generator over here we'll get into this because this is uh so let me just preface it with this actually hold on a sec sorry Now we can hear clearly, right? All the outside noise is silenced. Sometimes we gotta get to that place with the Lord. We gotta silence outside things so that we can hear Him clearly. But, uh, so I wanna talk about this. I'm probably gonna catch a lot of flack for this, and I've been sitting on this for about a year. When I first started ministry with the Lord, I used to like, uh, do a lot of street preaching and um, I'd preach the gospel and I would tell people their eternal fate, heaven and hell, wages of sin is death, the great gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. All these things are true, man. It was crazy. I would go preach these like crazy things and then I would get convicted and the Lord would like speak to me on certain things. And I came to ultimately, I'm just long story short, it came to a point where the Holy Spirit put on my heart. I could go on YouTube and make amazing videos in my own strength all over America, rebuking people and lifting up the name of Jesus and edifying, but it ain't really going to bear no fruit for his kingdom. And the Lord like was like, you, you have a choice. You can go around and, and make yourself look real cool and do all this stuff like a lot of these people on YouTube do. It's very easy. Anybody can do it. Or you, you could bear fruit for my kingdom. And when you bear fruit for my kingdom, there's no glory. You don't get no glory. You don't get all lifted up and puffed up. You don't get to make yourself look all cool on YouTube. You don't get to do all this stuff in your own strength. You don't get to do none of this stuff because there's no glory in bearing fruit for his kingdom, right? And what I'm trying to get at, and we're gonna look at scripture on this. Actually, you know what? Let's start with the scripture and we'll go from there. Oops, I'm on. Let's go to Isaiah 42. I've been looking at this for a year. For a year. I thought this was John the Baptist. And then in verse 1, we're going to read two verses. Verse 1, the Lord says, Behold, my servant whom I uphold, my elect one, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, and he will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. Well, did John the Baptist bring forth justice to the Gentiles? No, we're the Gentiles. We're grafted in the new covenant of Jesus Christ for the holy blood of the Lamb. This is talking about Jesus. Now, here's the point and the purpose for this video. Verse 2. He will not cry out, nor raise his voice, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. And while I was street preaching, this was brought to my attention by a brother. I was like, wait, Jesus didn't cause his voice to cry out and be heard in the street? That's not true. And I'm like, you can't say that in the word. And I started studying this. And then I started studying all the different places where Jesus preached or where I thought he did. And let's take a look at it. And I, I don't want anybody to misunderstand what I'm saying here. Preaching the gospel is a commandment in Mark 16, 15. Preaching the gospel is amazing. I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to those that want to bear the most fruit for the kingdom of God is humanly possible in this lifetime. That's who I'm speaking to. Look what it says in Luke 5, 1. So it was as the multitude pressed him about to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gerasenet. Okay, so let's go back to Isaiah 42. So Jesus Christ, they thronged him to hear the, him preach the word of God to them, right? He didn't go to ungodly sinners and he didn't go out in the street and raise his voice telling people to repent. So why do we do that? Because aren't we supposed to imitate Jesus in everything that we do? The way the Holy Spirit instructed me 
When he gave me that option, I had two paths to go. They're both blessed by the Lord. They're both great. You know, there's nothing wrong with being a street preacher. And we still do preach from time to time, but I only preach testimony because Revelation 12, 11 says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So check this out. The one-on-one, -on -one. this is what Jesus wants. If you're really a laborer, an evangelist, and it's, it, it could be anybody, man. He, he chooses old women, he chooses children, he chooses drug addicts, he chooses Down syndromes, he chooses prisoners, he chooses the rejected, the worst of the worst, the ones that society would look at and be like, man, there ain't nothing, that person's nothing. What a piece of scum, right? Those are the laborers, those are the true laborers, man. The Lord was showing me these things. He showed me, you know, I had two paths a few years back. I could go the path of, of the loudspeaker and the bullhorn and the turn or burn, or we could fast and pray and go to a bus stop and say, Father, draw the ones you've been convicting. <laughs> draw them, Lord, and then minister to them as the Lord leads. And that's what I'm saying in this video. Study the scripture. Isaiah 42, 2 says the Lord Jesus Christ did not have his voice to be heard in the street. So why is it when I turn on this, this social media platform and I go to all these different Christian YouTube channels, it's all of them having their voice be heard with a loudspeaker, a bullhorn in the street. You know what I mean? It's crazy. And I'm not saying that's wrong because it's not. It's not going to bear as much fruit as if you did the one-on-one, -on -one, okay? It's not going to bear as much fruit because when people come out there, they don't have the Lord Jesus. They don't have the Holy Spirit of promise in them. They don't understand truth. And you come real loud and aggressive. They already put a barrier up and you're talking about their sin and you're and they feel like you're judging. OK, let me share with you what the Lord showed me on how to minister to people. Jeremiah 9, 23, 24. This is probably one of the most powerful scriptures in the entire Bible. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, let not the mighty man glory in his might, nor let the rich man glory in his riches, but let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these I delight, saith the Lord. This is the nature of the God, our Father. This is the nature of how the Lord touches the lost souls. What's the first one there in verse 24? Does it say righteousness, judgment, and loving kindness? No. It says loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness. God is a God of order, 1 Corinthians 14, 40. And because God is a God of order, this is God's order for evangelism. The sinner must know that they are loved. And once they know that they are loved, the conviction of God comes upon them because they realize they're not living right for the Lord, for a God that loves them and died for their sin and rose from the grave, right? What does that conviction produce? That's the judgment. And what does loving kindness and that conviction and judgment produce? Righteousness or righteous living. This is God's order for evangelism. So, like I said, this is probably, I'll probably get a lot of flack. Man, there's a lot of trolls on the last video. Once again, if you please read Matthew 18, 15 through 20, if you want to rebuke me, I will listen to you. I'll give you my phone number and you can talk to me on the phone because Jesus says when you have a problem with your brother, you're to go to him privately. So I believe the scriptures, guys. I believe the Lord gives us the scriptures for a reason. So if you, if you think I'm a heretic, you want to rebuke me and do all this stuff and, and like one dude just kept one on all my videos he's called me adulterer like I don't think these people are even like understand Christianity or what Jesus is or who he is or how he frees us or how he redeems us how his atoning blood works like I don't think people understand this stuff that's why I want to talk to you dude so if you want to rebuke me go ahead and email us to free bibles the number four in the letter you at gmail I'll give you my personal cell number and we can study the scriptures together I will patiently hear you out on what you have to say on why I'm off and all this other stuff, why I'm adulterer, why I'm all these things that you guys keep, not you guys, but these people keep saying. And um, we'll pray about it, dude. We'll let the Lord, let the Lord lead. I submit to the Lord, man. So uh, yeah, there's that. So just pray about this teaching. I know this is a off topic video, but it needed to be said. And it's been sitting on my heart for a year. I just didn't know how to say it. And right now the Lord is like, just start recording it. So here it is. Isaiah 42 2. Let's look at it one last time. Amen. 
I love you guys, man. I really do. Jesus Christ will not cry out, nor raise his voice, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. Jesus taught the multitudes of thousands. Notice he taught the multitudes of thousands. They seek to hear the word of the Lord from him. He didn't go out to the ungodly sinners accusing them of their sin. They don't even, dude, I remember one time I was street preaching when I was like that. And I, told, I was in the bullhorn. I was like, repent. And some dude came up to me. He's like, he's like, man, calm down. He's like, what does that word even mean? I don't even know what you're saying. And it was, dude, it, it's an eye opener when somebody says something like that to you. That's when you realize you're doing things in your own strength. These people don't even know what the word repent means. And everybody's telling them to repent. They don't even know what it means. <laughs> they, don't have, they don't know the Lord. So we got to, <laughs> it's crazy, man. These last days are crazy, man. Christians are crazy, man. Christians are some of the best and some of the worst people I've ever met in my life, man. I mean, I've rode with train riders. I've been locked up with like hardcore felons. Like I've rolled with some heavy hitters, man. I even rolled with like Satanists and witches. Like I even hopped trains with a warlock dude for like two years, man. I'm telling you, man. I know all sorts of different types of people, soldiers, teachers, but man, Christians are some of the best human beings I've ever met in my life and some of the worst people I've ever met in my life, man. So I'm, I just, it, that's, it is what it is. I'm just uh, ranting now, so I'm going to shut this down. I just want to pray real quick, all right? All right, Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this word, Lord. Please manifest truth in each one of our hearts and our minds, Lord. Help us to study this and understand what the scripture means and help us to apply it, Father God to speak of your love, your judgment, and your righteousness for the lost. Father God, help us to operate how you want us to operate, Lord. Not how we think we should, but how you want us to, Lord. And I thank you and praise you. Hallelujah! In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, guys.